Okay, welcome to College Talk, Talk Tuesday. <laughs> Easy for me to say. Pearl and Andy Lockwood here from Lockwood College Prep, talking college. And today, Pearl, yes. welcome. Welcome, Andy. Well, Hi, everybody. I'm welcoming you. You don't welcome me back. Welcome, Andy. No, no. Welcome, Pearl. Oh, thank, thank you. Thank you, Andy. I feel nice very welcome. Nice to see you yeah. and everybody. Yes, we're here live <laughs> in the new spacious Lockwood College Prep tutoring facility. Backed by such educational luminaries as John Belushi, aka what was he? Otter? No. Uh, what was his name? The guy who did the food fight. Yeah. Whatever. How do we not know that? If any viewers are out there now and yeah. you could quickly put it in, I know we're. This is shameful. Yeah, yeah I'm very embarrassed. I am. So uh, yeah. Anyway, Gabe Cotter is here as well in spirit. All right. So. What we're talking about today is really an extension of a uh, conversation that we have a lot, but we had it most recently, five minutes ago, when I mistakenly uh, streamed this to the wrong Facebook page. But even before then, this morning, Pearl and I were chatting about a, a client who shall be unnamed, but it doesn't really matter what the name is because we have this type of situation again. And I'm talking about the talk, meaning here we are in March. Many, but not all, college acceptances have started to come in, as well as college uh, financial aid and scholarship offers. And parents are being, I guess they're starting to realize just how much college is actually going to cost. That's the weird thing about this whole, um, this whole process, that you apply without really knowing, even though you know, Pearl does her best to, to make projections on what colleges are actually going to cost families. Until you actually see the number, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like a different uh, type of intangible scenario mm -hmm. that becomes tangible very quickly. Yes. Okay, so along those lines, just to kind of frame this, because I want, I want you to uh, do most of the talking here. Along those lines, um, the, the client was, was kind of uh, t talking to Pearl about, okay, so my son got into two different colleges. We're trying to decide between these two schools. And, of course, Murphy's Law being what it is, the college that costs this amount is the one that the kid wants to go to, and the one that costs half this amount is not the one that the uh, kid wants to go to, but the dad, and you claim the mom, although I'm not sure about that, um, are, are, are kind of the opinion that, well, the dad certainly feels like, is it really worth you know going to the double price school? Like, why would he go there? So pick up on that, and, and I'll just remind everyone, welcome, we do this every week, 12 p.m., if you have any questions, whether you're watching this live or on replay, please pop them in. Just say hi, actually, even if you don't have a question, other than you just want to uh, stop by. Leave them in the comments here, and please share and like and, and all that. And if you have these discussions, if you've had any of these discussions with older kids, or you have a senior now, and you, you've handled these uh, types of questions the same way or differently, I'd like to hear about that. If you have a sophomore or a junior, and you haven't had this discussion yet, this might be the, the time to plant that seed, right? Or so, for that matter, if you have an older kid and you're sorry you didn't have this conversation. Yeah, and you want to warn other people as a, right. as a public service uh, announcement, you know, like, like we're trying to do here. Right. So, all right, so walk us through that, that conversation, and uh, right. I'll, I'll try not to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. So this is a senior in high school, and he's heard from most, but not all of his schools yet, but he uh, got into as Andy had said, it's actually a state school in another state, so it's really like it's an out-of-state price and it's double what an in-state New York state school would be, and that, and which is also the student's option. The kid, of course, um, probably for what we talk about a lot, the rear window sticker reasons really wants to go to, and not, not exclusively, the other big reason is because of the sports. That's the other big one. Well, he doesn't... Often they are hand in hand. Right. Well, he That's doesn't play they're... the sport. He just <laughs> wants to view the sport, I guess, live. In a big state school. In a big, right. In a big, in a big state school, not his state. Um, and that's what he's focused on. Career-wise, truthfully, um, this kid wants to be an accountant. And I mention that because of it, the relevancy of, so now we can all acknowledge that it really doesn't matter where he's going to go to school to get the trade of accounting under his belt, if he wants to be an accountant. Anyway, nonetheless, um, his father insists on getting a good value for the education. And in his eyes, rightly so, there is no 
distinguishing feature between the two schools, except for the, the price tag, unfortunately. So he can't in, in the dad's good, eyes. In the dad's eyes, and in, he well, can't in good conscience, um, you know, make that financial sacrifice for that end, to that end. I mean, the way I always look at it is like if, if the kid were blindfolded and sitting in a freshman class at one school versus the other, you have no idea where you are. The accents might be a little bit different, maybe, but but quality, yeah. of, edu quality of education wise, hard, hard to make the argument that one school is better than the other one. Correct. They're all college kids. Some are here, some are there, some are there. Um, anyway, so the father's concern, or his father, the kid has been insisting, well, I really want to go to this other school. Um, why'd you let me apply there? And he said, I said, you could apply anywhere you want, but if unless these other places have, that have a, a high sticker price don't come down in the way of awards or merit or money, you don't need to pay back and have as an albatross around your neck for the rest of, of your life or the near future after you get out of college. Or the parent. Or the parent. Having all that debt. Having all that debt, exactly. Um, that needs to be figured into the decision. Um, so he said so, that the so kid. So why? So so the, 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 have he, has he had the talk yet with his son? He's been having the talk, and and it's a series of discussions. It's a series of discussions where right now the kid won't even or ha is unwilling to even visit these other state uh, schools he has gotten into still. where they know people still so far. Because yeah, okay. Because that's an ongoing one. That's an ongoing yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Has okay. not yet, and and the father wants to say, I want you to just see because the kid, what the father is explaining is that the student is very consumed with the fact that other peers of his in, in um, I guess an affluent area does do not need to seemingly make be forced with that choice, and I was explaining that sometimes things don't always. Uh, sometimes somebody's outsides may not reflect what's really going on in the inside. Um, to that end, I, I shared that we have another client, um, you know, we have had over the years, who made the choice to go to the high sticker price school to their financial detriment um, when they were faced with a similar choice. This was a private institution versus going to a state school. The, the swing of dollars was about $40,000 a year different. Extra. Extra. And the schools are imperceptibly, you know, academic, excellent-wise, uh, the same. Well, when you, when you look at what Arguably, GPA and uh, average SATs, ACTs, are people coming in, that type of thing? Yes, exactly. Or, or even prowess, you know, brag, bragging rights, as between these two schools. I would argue even the less expensive school is more impressive. But in any case, Can in you a say similar, the schools, at least? that one or not? Um, it was Binghamton and Syracuse. Oh yeah, okay. So, um, and unfortunately here, so Syracuse being about almost triple the price of Binghamton. Correct. More than double. And we we watched this happen like someone slides down a cactus tree. It was very sad. I've never actually seen that. No, but you can, we can all imagine how that must feel if you're sliding down a cactus tree, right? Okay. So that's what this looked like in terms of, okay, so this family couldn't afford it, was having you know financial issues even in terms of job stability. As it were, their, they, their living expenses were more than what they were bringing in, and they did not have this conversation in time and allowed the kid, so to speak, to ride the train, drive the train. Yeah. And the kid went to the more expensive school. Eventually the family sold their house and had to make you know, even greater, huge financial sacrifices. To what end, folks? Really? It'll, what, it'll take years for them to climb out of this hole that they've, they're creating for themselves. And that, exactly, so that is... But even, listen, I, there, sorry to interrupt you, but yeah. even beyond that, I mean, this is something else we're talking today, even if you have the money, you know, a lot, a lot, of, our, a lot of our families that we, that we work with, they, they can't, it's not like they're, they can't scrape two nickels together, like the, the, the family you're talking about. It's like they have a decent amount of money, they don't want to blow it all and then borrow the rest or, or blow it all, period, and they're, and they're questioning the value, and, and I think the issue that, that you said today was like, you know, 
well, for a kid who's never paid a bill in their lives, like, how do you have that discussion? And I'm, I'm sort of racking my brains. I'm thinking, like, okay, so let's say, you know, you have an Xbox, which costs, uh, you know, $200, and there's, like, a little bit nicer Xbox, which has just a nicer, like, plastic casing on it, and that costs $400. And you say to your kid, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you $200. You choose which Xbox you want, and if you're going to come up with, you know, if you, if you choose the other one, then it's gonna cost you a lot more than two hundred extra dollars because you're gonna borrow it, you're gonna pay interest on it, it's gonna prevent you from doing other things, you can't go out, you know, um, uh, on, on weekends, you know, in a year or sometime in the future, all that stuff. I don't know if that's really, you know, something that's gonna resonate with the kid who's never paid a bill, but um, I think it's really important that, I, you know, we, we have four kids, one in college, one who's a junior in high school, and then a ninth grader and a seventh grader, the two younger ones are girls, the two older ones are guys, you know, saying again, um, our oldest one's always worked, but he's you know he's he's been okay with money. He's been kind of frivolous with money. Our eleventh grader um, worked a little bit, but he doesn't quite get it, you know, because it didn't really work out at his at his first job for through you know not totally through his, his fault. Um, and uh, you know he's very quick to ask us you know for, for for money for things and not really understand that you know the uh, the the what the twelve hundred dollars uh, worth of car repairs that he caused you know uh, public service announcement yeah, this is a big well. one turn up the volume go ahead no I'm this just, is I'm a good spl splay well I'm, I'm not sure only you sidetracked no I'm, I'm not you, you can say that after I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to get sidetracked about either. it it's but important. it's like you know they, they don't quite get that it just like you know all the Microsoft Xbox bills that you see you know flowing through our credit card right and instead of you you know buying clothes for yourself or going to dinner or you know whatever you know, all, all these things like they don't they don't get and that um, that's why I was saying before that when when um, or I guess this was in the the ill-fated broadcast that didn't that didn't happen you were talking about how when kids are a lot little we have a lot more say over them and they do more of, of what they're told and I was saying well I'm not so sure about that but as they as they get older you know they start to have a mind of their own and all that and the, and the problem is when you don't have this talk early on and set expectations along the lines of um, you know about about just because you can fly somewhere doesn't mean I'm going to send you there. And that was and that was something you had said yes. about the client. Yep. Um, the kid said something like, "Well, you, how why'd come you, I apply? Why'd there? you let me apply there?" And what, and what was the response? He said I said you could apply wherever you want, but unless and until that price comes down to the neck of the woods of the state school by hook or by crook. However, uh, I'm not paying for that when this is an option. So so in this case, I don't think the kid really believed that. <laughs> right. He had that conversation. Right. Or, like maybe or they like, just, ah, that's just dad talking. Or they suspend reality and think something is going to happen, that they're going to get some merit aid or something in, you know, blood from a stone. Not really merit aid, but in a. Well, they don't know. I don't even think they had that, that thought, the kid. I think they're just like, well, I don't even know. It'll somehow, look the same somehow. My dad just, and mom right. buy me clothes. They right. pay, you know, we have this house somehow. And right. they put gas in the car somehow, which is a segue for you. Um, they, um, you know, whatever. It just, it just. We go on vacations. We, you know, buy stuff. We're not starving. You know, so why, you know, why should it be any different when I when I go to college? And I think a lot of parents just kind of internally, I don't know if they feel ashamed about not being able. To, some do about not being able to just write a check to pay for college. I, I hear that a lot from people. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you know, I feel so bad. I should have started this a lot earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, I only have X amount saved. And my response is, you you have plenty of company. Uh, most people don't have, you know, two hundred fifty thousand dollars extra lying around um, because it takes a lot of money to earn that two fifty after ta to net two fifty after taxes. Mm -hmm. But even if you do have it, then the question is: Do so you want to spend it that way? Yeah, is, do you is want to really pay a premium for something that may investment? not be worth that premium? Yeah. So we see Unless you're buying into all the marketing so, out there. So as, as, as far as we're concerned, this this is the conversation that every family should have early right. on with kids, way before they apply to college, like our client apparently tried to do mm -hmm. with the kid. But we'll but see what happens. This, which one? The one that, that he said you can apply anywhere. But oh, we'll, see what uh, well that story's not finished being told yet. We'll just see what happens. I, I will have to see what happens. We'll have to report back. What are you betting? Cheap uh, school or expensive school? What's your bet? While she's I, while she's deliberating I, for no reason, the, the, so so there are, there are more nuances to this also. So another conversation I have a lot when I'm talking to families one on one that I'm working with is along the lines of okay, if you are not sure what you're going to major in, 
or you know you're going to major in education, or you know you're going to major in something where it doesn't necessarily matter where you go undergrad. Right. right. That is a different discussion than if you were dead set on going to Wall Street and you knew that paying up for Wharton or for some yes. sort of Ivy League school could right. actually pay off, potentially. Right. But if our kids wanted to go to Wharton, which I don't see that happening, yeah. but if they wanted to go to some you know, school with a return on investment, uh, the high sticker price and return yeah. on investment, I would be tempted to, you know, drive an Uber or something just to kind of help them, you know, make make ends meet if I if I had to. You right. know, but I don't really Depends on see that, that that's what they're going into. Yeah. So in this case, the kid is not necessarily going into a career that uh, it really matters where you go undergrad. Correct. So it's well, purely for educate. It's purely for entertainment purposes. That is correct. To go to the big state school. Correct. Because he likes so sports. too with this other party who ended up going to Syracuse. Yeah. Um, so what's your call? What's your prediction? Big, big out-of-state expensive school or in-state cheaper school? Come on. I am hoping that not what you hope. What's your prediction? Okay, school. I'm gonna go with the other. I'm gonna go of with the opposite. Of course, I know. Okay. <laughs> I'm right. We will report back on that. Maybe. I will. Uh, unless he's watching. I will. In fairness, he <laughs> might be. <laughs> okay. All right. So okay. So continue with with. Uh, I think you were talking about just more of the return on investment stuff. I'm not sure. Well, it's just it, you. It's parents sometimes are are terrified to examine what the value, the difference in value is when faced with that choice, yeah. because it, it's a hard conversation to have with yourself, much less your kid, if the if you can't justify why you would pay retail like that upwards of forty thousand dollars a year different. Right. Imagine just for one second if we said, well, what if we took the difference and send you to the state school and take $40,000 a year for four years, that's $160,000, and gave it to you when you graduate that state school. Then the kids, when they steal that money in their own pockets, perceptually, maybe they would pause in their, in their tracks a little and said, oh, wow, really? So I would get $160,000? When I graduate, if I just go to the state school, have that conversation. Yeah, that's what would good. you do? Give it to your kid. Incentivize them to keep the money in the family at least. Why are you giving it away? Yeah, I, I think the problem, and you know, we have the same you know type, type of problems, is that it's, it's, it's hard to make it tangible. It is. You know, for, they're for too kids. young. Like all, all we're talking. Well, they're just. I don't know if it's young or, or it's a combination of young and inexperienced. Inexperience. Yeah, without having to pay for stuff young, themselves. Yeah. Right. So, so I feel like um, we have, we see a handful of kids who are not like that, but I think mm -hmm. most kids are not are not exposed. Sometimes it's intentional, sometimes it's not. I see some comments here. Um, Mar uh, Margaret said she already had had the conversation, had the talk with her sophomore, which is great. Uh, Jimmy Lee is on Keon. Jimmy Lee is on, and uh, I know uh, firsthand that he and I um, had that conversation with Chris, who actually ended up at. Um, he got into harder schools but mm -hmm. to get into, but he went. He ended up going to Great Bentley, school, yeah. which is easier to get into, but gives a ton of money. And they're number one or number two for internships every year. And, and Chris is a business guy, yeah. so so that actually made sense for him to pay less to go to there as opposed to I think he got into BC and some yeah. other schools that didn't give any money. And it was it was I, I thought it was kind of touch and go for a while whether he would end up at, at Bentley. That wasn't where he was psyched to go, but he seems like he's doing very well. Um, anyway, so. I think um, you know a lot, a lot of times the you know when you when you kind of uh, ex try explaining this to kids, the issue is that they're like yeah 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 this is just something else you're telling me it doesn't really make sense to me. But if you start saying like just imagine you had a hundred thousand dollars, you know would you want to just give that to the school because then you have a chance at going to big basketball games or football games, or would you rather have um, just keep it somehow and use that you know for something that's not immediate. You know, instant gratification. Maybe it's a little delayed gratification, hmm. which, which you know I think this is a subset of. I think this is the question about instant versus delayed you know gratification. That's a big problem for yeah. I mean some adults. You yes. Know? Uh, I, I certainly am not the most patient person in the world, and <laughs> okay, Pearl. Um, <laughs> but but uh, it's all it's also you know a big it's a big deal for uh, for kids to to learn that because everything is so instant these days. Um, yes. The concept of having to kind of wait and earn something. Is, is uncomfortable foreign. and uncomfortable for them because they it's a muscle that has been untrained. We, we had a situation, I don't know if I told you this, we, we had a, um, a person this uh, who was in this classroom this weekend, we're running ACT prep classes, and we offered a one lesson 
free trial, not free trial, money back guarantee. And just because it's a new, it's a new business, and um, I mean our tutor is not new, but it's, it's just new for us to promote, and we want to remove as much risk as, as possible. So we had this. Did I tell you this or, or no? We, uh, we had this mom sure. who was wishy-washy the whole way through about how her son was not the best student, mm -hmm. but he's a really good kid, and um, you know he's he's not he didn't do too, too well the first time he took the ACT, so he's taking you know, he wants to take another one and prep for it. And kind of some red flags. She had this long conversation with me. She had this, it sounds like the identical conversation with Marissa. Mm -hmm. And she, so she signs him up for the class. He, he sat there, I, I was here for a lot of it, observing it. And, uh, and Marissa, you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's ACT prep, so how, how interesting can it be? But she mm -hmm. was, oh. you know, teaching. She was asking him the whole class a lot of questions because we only had five kids in there. So it's a nice small group, it's interactive. We didn't Two have Barney. Out, what? We didn't have Barney. That's funny. Two out of the five. Yeah, Marissa's definitely not Barney. Two, out, but we can talk her into it. Um, two Maybe out of the costume, at least. Two or three out of the five were answering questions, asking you know questions and engaging. And this kid was not one of them. So we got an email the following day, technically after the guarantee period ended, and the mom said something like, you know, uh, my my son didn't feel like he uh, it was right for him, which is fine because we said you don't have to give us a reason. But then she went on to say he just didn't feel like he was engaged enough. <laughs> and that she was doing too much writing on the board, on the whiteboard. And I'm thinking to myself, t does he just like whiteboards to be clean? Is, is it like, you know, what, what, good luck in college? Like, what do you, what do you think you're gonna get in, co in college? But, but also, she was asking questions the whole time. So, I, you know, I just think that um, in that case, he didn't want to take the class. Mm -hmm. that, that was obvious to me, and okay. the mom kind of shoved them into it. Right. So when you do stuff like that, when you force your kids to, to do things, or you let them, you know, again, drive the, tr the train or the bus, yeah. you know, too much, these types of results are going to happen. I promise you, he's not going to do well at all the next time he takes the, I, I should have said something like, I just refunded it, I didn't respond, but I should have said something like, hey, let me know how he does on the next ACT, yeah. you know, <laughs> once, once you get it. I'm curious yeah. to see, see if he improves on his own. Right. I'm sure I'll get radio silence for that. Probably. Um, but yeah. that's, it's all part of the same stuff. It's like, you know, yeah. kids have to understand that they have to do the work. And they have to understand that, you know, if you want whatever X is, you've got to, you know, you've got to do A, B, and C first. Yeah. With this talk, mm -hmm. it's got to be, about, you know, I'm just, I'm curious if any, uh, any of you guys who are watching, if you guys um, have, have specifically what you've told them about. Um, so, so Margaret said she had to talk with her sophomore. Mm -hmm. I'm curious what you um, what you already said to your sophomore about college costs. You know, along 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 the lines of what you were saying before, it's like, hey, you can apply anywhere you want, but the numbers have to work out, which is it's just odd anyway, because you wouldn't buy a house that way. No, there's no other that investment that you'd make without have, doing the same due diligence. You right? I mean, otherwise, you don't. You're not. But you wouldn't really be like, I really want to live in that house, and then it. we'll and then we'll see how much it costs in three months. Right. It'd be more like, let me see how much it's going to cost, and then I'll invest the emotional energy and my, you know, my other thoughts in whether I should live there. Right. If I can afford it. Exactly. But in college, it's like it's bifurcated. It's I want to go to the school, and then we'll figure out if I can afford it. That's odd. Which, by the way, this touches it on. It's harder for kids. It, and adults who make decisions that way as well. Just saying, you know, if 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 you make decisions and not look at all the facts and the financial facts, and you make these decisions based on emotional, irrational thought patterns, you are gonna be in a bind at some point. And well, that is bad arguably, decision, arguably. And there no, no, is- arguably, that's how we make decisions anyway, I'm just saying. Like, and often, I'm, I, and believe, sometimes we I believe 90% of our decisions are irrational and we justify them, but you've gotta okay. condition yourself to, to try to put some thought behind decisions, yeah. especially ones that are so have such a hefty price tag. So, so this kid that we we're talking about in the beginning, he he wants to go to a certain school because of stuff that we would say is irrational, but to him it's not irrational. Right. You know, I I, I want to have fun in college. I want to go to big games. I like the you know the sports you know the basketball, base uh, football. I want to go right. all, all that stuff because I love sports. My response would be yeah, friggin' watch it on TV. Um, go with your friends to a bar and watch it or something. You know, I went to a tiny college. What, you know, we had like three thousand kids there. Uh, I mean, I played a sport, so that was probably a little different. You know, but but still, I, I didn't feel like I was missing out compared to my friends who went to Michigan and Wisconsin. You know, they went to some of those games. Um, 
Who, uh, who, uh, our, our niece, I guess, well, she, I guess she's your, uh, our second cousin, my cousin's daughter goes to Alabama, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, I remember he was telling me, Jeff, he went, he went down, loyal listener, Jeff, um, <laughs> and Laura, uh, he, he, I think last year they went to go you know, see a game, to visit yeah. her, see a game, and, and he ended up going to the game, and she didn't. Right. And it was just there, you know, even though she went for the big time stuff, so it's, it's probably a different feel than mm-hmm. a tiny school. But, right. just, you know, and I guess the other thing, I don't mean to ramble, the other thing is Important. if you are dying to go to a Michigan or something and you don't get in and you end up going to a state school, you know, wherever you live, that doesn't necessarily have the same rah-rah sports and feel, I still think that 95% of the time you end up being very happy there and just, you know, and, and making your own friends and, you know, you have plenty of stuff to do also. I don't think it's... I don't think the binary, either you're going to a great school where there's a lot of stuff to do or you're going to hate right. college. Right, you're either going to have a college experience it. or not. Yeah. If you're going to college, you are going to have a college experience. Well, there's more than one college exactly. experience. Exactly, of course thing. there is. We hear that a lot. I want and, the college and, and experience. And truthfully, yeah. every choice has a cost-benefit analysis. It has a cost, has a benefit. Whether you choose to do it or not. Right. No matter what choice you and your family ultimately make, Go through what the cost-benefit analysis of all the choices are. You owe it to yourself. It, it's too big a price tag not to. Let's go to the mailbag here. <laughs> okay, because I see some, uh, some action here. So, Margaret says she told her daughter, 10th grader, that a state school is what we can afford. She wants to be a teacher. She refuses to stay home, which is fine. Right, I, th- I think that's perfect. Why would you go anywhere else? You can go anywhere and get a teaching certificate. Some schools are better with education than others. But if you're looking at, you know, we know people who uh, send their kids to um, you know, Tulane or something for $75,000 and then they become a teacher, or Princeton, or um, Columbia to, to, to grad school. But you can do the same thing at community college and then to get the rest of your classes, your credits and stuff at a, at a state school. I think that's very, very smart. So um, as, as long as she's committed to being a teacher. Uh, and you might see if she gets a scholarship to private schools also. Right, exactly. Like that, that happened with our, our son who's at a state school. He's at Albany. Um, he got into a bunch, I was telling this yesterday to another family, he got into a, a bunch of um, small liberal arts colleges that offered uh, merit scholarships mm-hmm. for some reason that even we can't, no, okay. <laughs> um, that I knew that, that Pearl was stunned by. And um, sh- and we didn't even try to negotiate them yet, but the costs were, were substantially similar, and mm-hmm. only a little bit more than, than where he ended up at Albany. Um, I personally thought that he would have done better at these smaller liberal arts yeah. colleges. And we, you know, we visited, like one drove by a couple, and he, and he decided um, that he'd rather go to a bigger state school. He felt more comfortable there. It was, you know, there's other reasons that didn't have anything really to do with academics. Right. Um, and for, I think for the most part, he you know he, he uh, he's doing well and mm-hmm. it, it's working out so far academically for him, you know not not purely you know without a couple of hiccups, but um, I I you know I, I, I would have rather him gone to a different type of school, but it was his decision at the end. But we we talked through Once all these. Once the price tag was the same. Yeah, the numbers were the same, right? Which right. which is what Margaret was saying. So so I think you, you know again you never know. All right, so Zelda. We told our junior approximately how much we were able to contribute, then mentioned their part in scholarships, then mentioned their part in expectations of working on and off campus. You're right, exactly. Mm-hmm. So that is still, to me, it's still intangible for a lot of kids, but right. that's, you, you gotta keep, even if you have the same this conversation like three times or, or whatever, I, I think that's the type of stuff you need to, to talk about. Um, and oh, Zelda, third person, lives in Maine. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, are you that diner? I think she. Uh, I think she, were you the one? Were you the one who told me you were uh, here Saturday from some diner? I actually spoke to another client today from uh, from Maine. You probably know them because Maine, you know, has two um, people in it. <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Barbara, loyal listener, uh, Barbara Mitchell, who, who apparently not that loyal because I don't see her uh, chiming <laughs> away. So, um, she told me a really funny story. She she for for some reason. Her, uh, well, I know the reason, for, but um, for some undisclosed reason, not appropriate for Facebook, um, they went to go uh, see um, a super religious college. It was one of those where they had one of these debates, one of the presidential debates. I can't remember the name of it right now, but uh, I'll, I'll remember as soon as we go off the air. And all the other schools that she was interested in had no religious denomination whatsoever, but they went, but they went to see this particular school 
it wasn't Lynchburg, but it was it was in the south somewhere. Liberty, Liberty, huh. which is, I think is near Lynchburg actually. Okay. So so um uh, and she got there and they kept hearing about how you know you could become a female pastor and all these other things. So they're like, nope, not going there. I'm like, how did you end up going there? And it's like a family member who's very religious now and all that. <laughs> so so that, that that was kind of funny. Um, but uh, yeah. but they they were offering all kinds of money right off the bat. If you have a two, if you have three point you're gonna get a full ride here. So I said, you know, would be the worst thing in the world to get a full ride offer, so then you could possibly use that against exactly. other colleges, yeah. you know, that you that you ultimately um, would prefer to go to, and maybe we can play them off against each other. But let's just try to do that with schools where she might actually end up wanting to attend, as opposed to Ideally. purely for mercenary reasons. Right. Yeah. yeah. And we have a, another client talking today, Eric. Whose daughter Isabella got into uh, a handful of religious schools. She's a homeschool kid, and she was interested in mm -hmm. some religious, some non-religious schools. Um, there's one Messiah, mm -hmm. which is I, I, there's a couple people there. Yeah, exactly. Which is you know interesting for two Jews living in Long Island. Um, but but uh, uh, she's in a, and and I think she's now leaning toward a more secular um, urban mm -hmm. school. But we're using the other offers from the other schools to try and negotiate um, against the, uh, the the urban school that gave her a very good offer thus far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, all right. What else we got? Anything else? Hmm. Yes, the Portland Diner. Yeah, that's so funny. Funny. Um, try the hash browns. Yeah. Next time we're in Maine. Yeah, I was telling her, even though I have no um, basis for saying that. But how bad can they be? All right, good. So is there anything else? We're a little bit over our usual run time. But that happens on Facebook. Um, anything else you want to discuss? If you're local, we have uh, several workshops coming up this month. Where um, do we find those? We find those on our <clears throat> in Long Island. Where do we find? Website. How do we find out when your workshops are going to be? I'm typing that in. Get off my back. If you go to um, our website, Lockwood College Prep, and click on workshops, you will see our workshop schedule. So we've got three coming up this month, uh, tomorrow in Smithtown, which I actually think we sold out if you can. Tomorrow? If you can sell out a free workshop. They but have check the website because weather. possible we're going to have a big snow out. Same. Okay. Snow's going to come in the morning tonight and into the morning. The roads should be clear by then. And, uh, but we'll communicate with people otherwise. Yes. And then uh, we are, let's see, I think um, Dix Hills and Greenlawn later this month. It's all on the website. And then next month where we, because I'm hoping to drag you, um, our, oh, and my mom did say she would come with me this month oh, to, to the, to the one at Dix Hills. Yeah, she's coming in. Uh, she's visiting us. And then um, Next month, I know we're in Roslyn and Manhasset and possibly one other place where we're trying to squeeze in uh, an event here in this office because we have really comfortable seating for um, somewhere like, you know those new stadium seats in the, in the, uh, yes. in the movie theaters? It's somewhere in between those and hard aluminum um, benches with no backing. Somewhere on that scale. Um, so yeah, we're planning that, and then we're also we got some other stuff coming up for the summer. We're going to be um, promoting a boot camp um, that's going to happen in July for the college essays, and we're going to be also doing one in um, August, which will be a combination essay and applications just to get all that stuff done. And we'll do another one in September. We're going to open it up to current clients first, you know, coaching clients first, and then we'll open it up after that to the outside world. Um, what else? Keeps a great thing, keeps you sticking to a, a timeline that keeps you on track so that you don't get hit like an avalanche with uh, really the college process that unfolds that way. It's true. It's very the way, Yeah, the way, the way I look at it is it's not necessarily the most intellectual thing to, to run a boot camp, although we do talk about here are each of the essay primes, mm -hmm. here, how would you guys, you know, what, what do you think about that? Let's talk about your activities, how would you describe this, you know, there's one way to describe cashiering versus another way, one sells, one right. doesn't, those types getting of things. That but it's really more done. about just like getting kids butts on seats, yeah. in seats, and like, you know, confiscating your phone f for 45 minutes, you'll live, go write something, I'll talk to you in 45 minutes, you know, so, so there's some value keeping to Keeping them on track. Yeah, making sure nothing slips through the cracks. Exactly. Well, the worst thing you want ever to happen is, is you show up, um, you, you waste the whole summer, and now you're scrambling around in the fall, yeah. 
and you're trying to figure out, okay, how am I possibly going to do my regular school work, my regular right. extracurricular activities, and my essays and applications and all that type of stuff. Yeah. It's, it's a lot because mm-hmm. it's a lot of, it's, it's, it's not just a writing exercise, it's a time management exercise. Yes. So that's pretty rough. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we have all that stuff coming up. If you're on our email list, um, then you'll get notifications of this. Uh, if you go to our website, you can sign up to be on our on our list. Uh, we're, we're offering uh, free college planning tips that come into your inbox uh, once a week, every Friday. And we'll be on the air on, uh, this Friday. Also, we're doing College Coffee Talk, which I do every Friday at 9 a.m. Pearl usually does not join me, but occasionally she does. Um, she's recently, she's back from uh, her hair appointment, so this was a, you know, doesn't, doesn't she look great? And um, every Friday, I do a free hour of just answering questions about college planning. Because I get a lot of emails from people, hey, I have, a, I have a quick question. I got one this morning from someone I spoke to yesterday, and you know, I just, I hope this isn't rude, but I, I, I want to ask you about, you know, you made the volleyball team, but he needs to give up, blah, blah, blah. I, I can't, you know, I can't spend my time doing that. But I still want to be able to give free advice, and that's why we have College Coffee Talk every, every Friday. So um, I make the coffee. Free. I made it this morning. It was delicious. Pearl has been making it probably eight out of ten times. And it's delicious also. She has a certain gift. She's very gifted in the color. Oh, we didn't talk about your promotion. Has everyone left us yet? No, we still have six people. Okay. So <laughs> Pearl, uh, we should have made a big press release about this. Yes. Pearl is now CSO. Because we opened up, because we opened up the uh, the tutoring center, she is now chief snack officer. Yes. So she is responsible. The buck stops with her as to the protein bars and pirate booties. The buck stops with her when it comes to feeding our kids during their ACT prep. Bad snacks you will not find here. Is that like Yoda? That's almost creepy. a Yoda. Almost a Yoda voice. What was that? I was giving a little Yoda as my you know. Chief snack officer. That was disturbing. Position. Yeah. Okay. So cool. So that's uh, on that note. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna sign off, and don't ever talk like that again. <laughs> well, it wasn't even Yoda. You do a better Yoda. I was like, I do a better Yoda than yeah. that. I think I was holding that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, if you want any more of this for some reason, visit our site. And um, otherwise, I'll see you here Friday 9 a.m. All your college questions answered for an hour, up to an hour. And, uh, and stay tuned for you know workshops. We're gonna hit some webinars up. I think uh, perhaps a St. Patty's Day themed "Find Your Financial Aid Pot of Gold" webinar could yeah. be brewing. There's a rumor about that. All sorts of other fun stuff. All right, talk to you later. Bye.